Well, I think the biggest, uh, you couldn't call it a policy or even legislation for that matter, but the biggest social development in our lifetime uh, or in this era is the decline of the family. Now, yes. traditional conservatives like myself and, and possibly your good self too would argue that families are good for both men and women and that mm -hmm. a lot of women, I'm not saying all of them, are well suited to becoming homemakers and can obtain a lot of satisfaction and joy from creating a home, raising children and uh, surrounding themselves uh, with love uh, rather than working, yes. working for the man and you know, doing spreadsheets at the office until 12 at night. What's mm -hmm. your opinion about the decline of the family unit and how does that fit into Kotkin's argument? I agreed with Kotkin's argument, which was basically yours, that the family has traditionally been the place where um, men and women came together in order to create a safe place for the raising of children and for the nurturing of one another. Unfortunately, the feminist attitude to the family from the at least the early 60s, and I would argue it goes back even further into the 19th century, if you want to go way back to the origins of feminism with Victoria Woodhull and Elizabeth Cady Stanton um, and many others, they began to make the claim that the, that the family, far from being a safe haven for men, women, and especially children was actually a site of oppression where men subjugated women, where women were cruelly treated and had no rights and privileges. They even claimed that, you know, that sex itself, the sexual relation between men and women was a, a, a source of harm for women. And so from the early days, many feminists have called for the end of family and for the state to take over that function of raising children. And what they've done through the introduction, not only feminist ideologues, of course, but certainly with their support, we've seen no-fault divorce, which means that a man can be divorced against his will, and the vast majority of divorces today are initiated by women. A man can be divorced against his will, and he can find himself denied the right to parent his own children. He can find himself excluded from his own home, even while he's forced to pay for it. He can find himself forced to pay exorbitant child support and custody payments, and through a, perhaps a false allegation of abuse, uh, which is never properly investigated in family courts, he can uh, be placed in a position where he never sees his children again or doesn't see them for years or sees them only on alternate weekends under supervision of a social worker. So we have essentially farmed out the raising of children to a variety of state functionaries such as child psychologists and social workers and family court judges and lawyers and, and, uh, and, and we've deprived many fathers and some mothers too of their right to parent their own children. And this has had disastrous consequences. Every study of every major indicator of, of problems, uh, whether it's juvenile delinquency or dropping out of school or abusiveness or self-harm or suicide, finds that fatherlessness is a major contributor well, to all yes. of those social dysfunctions. Yeah, let's talk about the, the effect on, the, on kids because I think that what you just described then is the manifestation of the feminist idea that men need to be punished or made to suffer for some reason because they're men. And yes. it, that, that occurs most often when the family breaks down and the man continues to pay for all the expenses and is denied access to his own children. This is unbearably yeah. cruel and uh, causes enormous suffering, often in ways that we are completely oblivious to. I mean, these are men you could walk past on the street and you wouldn't know that the state is coming down on them and ruining their lives. Now, the, the, the consequence of that, Janice, is then that the kids themselves suffer. 